Well, shares of Moderna are climbing in this session. That stock up nearly 4% on news. It has completed the enrollment of that phase three study for its coronavirus vaccine. The drug maker is saying more than 25,650 participants have received the second vaccination. All of this coming as we continue to see the uptick in COVID cases. We're now seeing 60,000 new cases per day here in the U.S. Let's bring in Dr. Suzanne Judd. She is an epidemiologist at the University of Alabama at Birmingham School of Public Health. And Dr. Judd, Judd um, let's put this in context for us. You know, we get all these headlines on the vaccine from on a daily basis. Moderna specifically, we did hear from the CEO earlier this week saying he expects to get FDA authorization in December if things look good in November. How should we be looking at these headlines coming out of the company today? It's promising. It's promising that they have enrolled everyone they wanted to enroll. It's still not a, a short-term win. Um, it, there are a lot. There's a lot that goes into getting a vaccine. They have to manufacture it. They have to get enough of the vials so that they can actually administer it to large uh, portions of the population. And that just doesn't happen overnight. So approval is one step, but approval doesn't mean that the pandemic's over. In the absence of the vaccine, though, we are continuing to see those case counts uh, tick higher. What are you seeing on the ground there in Alabama? Cases are going up here as well, uh, particularly in young people. The schools have opened, so there's a lot of transmission happening from younger siblings that are in the house and then getting parents and uh, older siblings that may be off at college are also getting sick. The silver lining is that the, the deaths and hospitalizations haven't been as high. So we're experiencing lower mortality rates than we saw earlier this year, which could be due to better medical management um, with COVID, or it could be that there's a seasonal effect that when you get COVID uh, in the late summer, early fall, it, perhaps it's not as severe as if you were to get it in the winter, which we do see with influenza too. What's the science behind that? Why is it not as bad in the fall? Typically, there's great argument in the scientific community, but a lot of people think it has to do with vitamin D. Vitamin D, windows are open, so air is being exchanged at higher rates um, for as it's coming in and out of the house. One of those two reasons typically are the reasons uh, people point to why the, the rates are lower in the fall. You just mentioned the concerns about spread in schools. Um, we got new CDC guidelines sort of shifting the argument on who exactly would be considered a close contact. It used to be those who are within six feet in 15 consecutive minutes. The CDC has now said uh, if there is contact within 15 minutes over a 24 hour period, that would be considered a close contact. How does this shift the planning for schools or offices who have been operating on the CDC guideline? It becomes incredibly complicated. Uh, I'm not actually sure how a school will begin to operationalize it or even a workplace. What this means is that you have to guess who you came in contact with at various time points. These are the passing conversations in the hallway, at the drinking fountain, at the coffee pot, in the bathroom. Uh, before you had to be in the room for 15 consecutive minutes with the person, now you can just pass by them. Um, so it, it's a bit confusing, I think, for the average person how they'll interpret the guidelines. It's also going to be tough for health departments because now contact tracing is, is going to be um, substantially more than what it has already been. Each case will have more contacts uh, because of the change in timing. So what does that mean on, in terms of what, what more we know about the virus, it is, is the chance of infection much higher than we expected? I mean, what specifically does this guideline say about the ability for this virus to spread in a very confined space? So that's a great question, too. Um, CDC also changed their guidance about two weeks ago on whether or not COVID is airborne. They now say there is the potential that it can become airborne if people are singing or yelling or anything that's going to involve a lot of um, air and, and, and spit coming out basically at the same time. So that means that in close spaces like churches and um, choir concerts, there's the potential for COVID to spread much further beyond the six feet. Um, it can stay in the air longer than just 15 minutes if it's truly airborne. It just changes the way we have to think about managing it. As for the data, several epidemiologists have questioned why CDC did it. Um, the, specifically, the 15-minute rule comes from one study in a prison, and that's the only one that backs up the data. Um, it's probably out of an abundance of caution that they changed their guidance, but uh, it doesn't appear that COVID's any different than it was back in March. That new guidance, though, it has to be a big concern going into the colder months. And we've heard this from 
our guests every day who are saying that as the you know as we get to winter people are going to want to stay indoors more they're going to be want to stay in a confined space um you know when you look at where the numbers are the case counts are the positivity rates going up what's your biggest concern we're still in october we've got a long way to go for winter what are you going to be watching we do. We do. December is typically when influenza peaks, and we think COVID is going to be very similar to influenza. Uh, there's a good chance that cases will get so high that we will have to start slowing back down in terms of how much we're interacting with each other. We can't overwhelm the hospitals. So I think that's the big thing everyone's going to be watching. When are the hospitals getting to the point where they're saying, wait a minute, slow, we have to slow this again? Uh, I think December is going to be a really important pinch point. You've got Thanksgiving, then you've got Christmas and you've got the other holidays. It's, it's just a time when people are going to be socializing much more than they have been. Um, so there's just that potential for spread that will then lead into January and February when we really see peak hospitalizations for the flu. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.